So let's just take a very quick look at uh, a little extension to our small perturbation flight condition equations. So we've seen in the derivation of the steady state uh, flight equations and also the, the, perturb the small perturbation um, flight condition equations that the, the, the steady state flight condition equations basically tells us how to keep the aircraft flying with that particular steady condition, right? So, for example, consider the case if we're, we're flying along and we're in a steady state condition, everything's in trim, but we increase the thrust from the engines, for example, right? So we increase the thrust force, we keep our linear, or we want to keep our linear and angular velocities the same, at the same mass, and at the same pitch angle, we would therefore produce more lift, right? Because we've got more thrust, and therefore we produce more drag. So for us to keep the aircraft in that steady state flight condition that we, we started with, we must reduce the pitch angle to reduce the lift and therefore also reduce the drag. So that's what the steady state flight conditions tell us. It tells us how to keep the aircraft flying with that particular flight condition. Right Here, we're looking at um, how the aircraft responds to a small perturbation but from a specific flight condition, namely this steady state flight condition where we have a, a constant speed, constant altitude and wings level. So in this case all of our angular velocities start at zero, right? So this is the steady state flight condition which have the subscript ones, right? So angular velocities zero and our Euler angles are constant so that that means that the change in Euler angles are all zero, right? And since the steady state flight condition is wings level, as we assumed up here, then we have zero roll angle. So we can also assume that uh, phi one is zero, and therefore sine of phi one is zero, and cos of phi one is one. We also have no velocity component in the y direction because so say here's dusty so say we're flying along and we have some kind of um, your angle giving us a side slip we're still in this direction of flight right we're still following the x1 axis so we have no y component of velocity we might be um, we might be ascending or descending um, but and, and obviously we have a forward component of velocity, but because we've we've yawed the aircraft to give us a side slip and we're still following the x y axis, we have no y component of velocity. So what all of those assumptions mean is that we can reduce down our conservation of linear momentum equations, conservation of angular momentum equations, and the kinematic equations for the perturbed flight condition which we just derived, right? So remember back over here, these were our conservation of linear momentum equations and angular momentum equations for that perturbed flight condition. And these are the kinematic equations uh, as well. So basically what we're saying is that if we start from the steady state flight condition, then these equations reduce down even further using all of these assumptions that we've just discussed and we end up with this nice neat little system here.